This video is all about the shortcuts I use in my everyday life. Shortcuts, for those that don't know, it's the automation platform that's on the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac, even the Apple Watch. I have an intro video I already made on like how to build shortcuts and what they are. I'll link that and everything I talk about, including the shortcuts, in the description below so you can just go and download them for yourself. This video is sponsored by Exter. So the first shortcut I wanna start talking about is Snippet Cut. Snippet Cut is a snippet manager. This requires the app DataJar in order to work. What you do in DataJar, you create a list called Snippet Board. And what happens is when you run the shortcut, it will ask you to do one of two things. It will ask you to either save an item to Snippet Cut or get an item from Snippet Cut. When you save an item from Snippet Cut, it just takes whatever is on your clipboard, whatever you've copied last, converts it into text, and saves it right into Data Jar. I had this working with some images and stuff like that a long time ago, but it was a little buggy on the shortcut side, so I just use this for text now. And then when you want to get something out of it, you run the shortcut, select the Get option, and then it'll give you a list of everything that is in that list in Data Jar. You can select it, and it copies it right to your clipboard. I use this for things like um, email addresses or physical addresses, uh, links to sites that I use or links to my sites or affiliate stuff, just stuff that I need quite often. This is a kind of a place for, that I can store all of that stuff in and quickly get those items from. It's especially handy with like URLs I can't remember off the top of my head, like my website I can easily remember. But uh, when it comes to like affiliate stuff or stuff that I'm working on with other people, it's nice to just be able to save those links in one spot. Audio Cut is for Apple Music Playback. This allows me to pick random music, album, a recently added album, or even a live album. This will also show my playlist and give me quick access to the music I use for focus work. This is a pretty de detailed shortcut, uh, but really the only thing you need to change about this shortcut when you add it is it'll ask you to pick your Apple Music radio station. I use mine as just kind of like a quick way to like, hey, I want to play some music I like, but I don't really want to sit there and go through the library. This next one is actually kind of two shortcuts. Uh, the one I use is background audio. I like the app Dark Noise a lot. It's a background noise app that people use for falling asleep or you know when they're really needing to like drown out the world around them and do some like heavy focus based work. So this shortcut plays a dark noise custom sound set that I made in the app. But there is another shortcut because I realize not everyone wants to go and download third party apps. Uh, there is a noise feature built right into iOS and iPadOS. It is not on macOS. This shortcut is a little more detailed because of the way the background noise feature in the system works. So dark noise just plays as regular media so you can control it right from control center. So all that shortcut does is just start playing the sound and I can you know control the volume and, and play pause and stuff right from control center. The system one actually works as a totally different media playback and you can't control that from control center. So this shortcut gives you the option to play the sound, stop the sound and adjust the volume of the sound. I picked the rain one, but you can easily change out that sound for other options. Drop the needle is a shortcut I use a lot. What this does is it uses the home action and sets the playback destination to all of my home pods, then selects my Apple Music radio station and plays music throughout my whole house. I absolutely love this shortcut. It's not the most stable shortcut. It doesn't work all the time. And I can't easily share this one with you all. So if you do download this one, there'll be a bit of configuring you need to do. You'll need to go through, pick your home pods, and then select the audio you want to play back. Play podcasts in-house is just like uh, Drop the Needle, but this one focuses on playing podcasts. This one doesn't use the home action. This one actually uses the playback destination actions to set all of my home pods as the destination and then plays whatever the current podcast is in my queue and overcast. Now, these actions, these playback destination actions are buggy. I will honestly say 
it is a flip of a coin if this shortcut will work the first time it runs. Um, most of the time I have to run it two or three times to get it to work properly. It is incredibly buggy. This is why on Drop the Needle, I use the home action and not the playback destination one. Bedtime is a really nice shortcut that I, I use every night. It turns off all the lights and all the HomeKit enabled stuff in my house, basically, you know, sets, sets everything dark. Uh, and then we'll set the playback destination to the home pods that are in my bedroom, adjust the volume to about 30%. Then it plays a custom scene I made in dark noise. I really like this to fall asleep to. I'm not somebody that can fall asleep to just like silence. Capture cut is a shortcut I've had for a very long time and it has been iterated on a ton. If you've heard me talk about it in the past, it's very different from what I've talked about in the past. It now just focuses on quickly adding notes to drafts. And the way this works is when you run it, if you have like a Safari page open, it uses the get on screen content action to pull the URL from that, uses regular expressions to format it, and then formats it into a markdown link. Then I can go in and add whatever note I want. I use this as a way to quickly just capture, oh, hey, this thing looks super interesting. Let me just add this to drafts and I'll deal with it later. I, I, I use this an absolute ton. Launchpad is a shortcut I use to quickly jump into a craft document of that same name. Uh, my Launchpad document and craft is where I kind of link everything that I'm working on or is relative to my life uh, in one place. This is kind of the document I, I live out of. Uh, so I can just quickly jump into that and then I can just go from there for whatever I need. New video projects is a shortcut I use anytime I have a new idea or an active project or an idea for a short or whatever, I run this shortcut. This uses the old URL scheme. I need to update it for the new one, but I use the old URL scheme because there's a lot of encoding and stuff that needs to happen in this. And I just found the URL scheme to work best for that. Now, this shortcut is very personalized to me. It's built on four different projects that I have in things, and it works off of a template system. So I have all these tasks in there. When I run it, I pick whatever you know category the new video idea is going to fall into, whether it's an idea or an active project or a short, whatever. It will then ask me the name of it, fill all that out, then create a new project, then add a bunch of tasks that I have in shortcuts into that project. So it's, it's really a templating shortcut. Like I said, this one's really personalized to me. I don't think most people out there are gonna use it the way I use it, but I'm adding it to this list because I figured people can take it and tweak it and make it their own because it works really well as a template shortcut for creating projects and tasks and things. This video is sponsored by Exter. Exter is the maker of the best slim quick access wallet I've ever used. These come in a few different styles. These can hold up to 12 cards and some cash, but it kind of depends on how thick the cards you have are. You load up your cards by sliding them in up at the top. And when you need access to them, you just press this button and they fan out. This way you can grab the card that you need. So I've been using the MagSafe wallet for the last few years now. And one of the things I really don't like about it is if I need to get to the card that's in the back, I have to take out all the cards that are in it. That is not an issue with this. I can quickly grab my back card, which is my Costco card. The other issue with the MagSafe wallet is it only held three cards and that was really starting to become a problem for me. This can hold a lot more. If you're somebody that loses your wallet or misplaces it quite a bit, Extra has you covered. Uh, there's a couple of different options. First, there is a tracking card and it's solar powered. So you just leave it out. A full charge will get you about two months worth of use out of it. But the other option, and this is the one I personally will use. If you're like me, you already have some air tags lying around. You can get a special card holder that lets you put an air tag into it. This way you can just use the Find My app. So go check out the Exter wallets. Use the link in the description below or code Lolly at checkout for up to 35% off Exter wallets for their Valentine's Day sale. Get Video Projects uses the new things actions and it gets all of my video projects, whether it's active projects, ideas, or shorts. It gets everything so I can kind of see all the stuff I have going on in one place. 
Now this uses the new find action for things, uh, which I'm really excited things got. It it's basically allows you to go through your things database and find projects, tasks, areas, whatever, that meet the specific categories and specific filters you put into this action. I have a bigger shortcut and something that that's I'm really excited about that I'm working on, but it's not finished yet. So I'm not ready to talk about it just yet, uh, but just know these actions are incredibly powerful and I'm super excited they're here and I have something coming. Laundry timer is another things shortcut. I use things as a place that I run my life out of. So big items like video projects get put in there, but also small things like, hey, laundry's done, gets put in there as well. So what this shortcut does is it gives you two options, clothes or bulky items. Now, your, everyone's washer and dryer may be a little different, so you know, you can adjust this how you want. But for me, clothes take about 60 minutes for it to like go through the wash and go through the dryer. Bulky items take about 90 minutes to go through the wash and go through the dryer. So I can select which one I want. It will then take the current time at either 60 minutes or 90 minutes and then create a new task and thing saying, hey, check the laundry. It will either remind me in 60 minutes from the time that I run the shortcut or remind me 90 minutes from the time that I run the shortcut. In my old place, this wasn't a shortcut I needed because my washer and dryer was literally right outside of my office. I could hear it. But in my current place, the washer and dryer is on the other side of the house in the garage. So I, I will never hear it, you know, buzz saying, hey, it's done. So that's what I use the shortcut for. So I don't forget, hey, I left clothes in the wash or the dryer or whatever. Kind of piggybacking off of I run my life out of things, I also have a shopping list project in things. Now, what this does is it allows you to add items to that shopping list. Now, this could have been a simple one action shortcut that just lets you type in something like bread or milk or something like that and just add it into things. But what I did is I added an ask for input option and it allows you to add multiple items. So each item needs to be its own line. So you could do milk, bread, steak, pizza, whatever, just make sure it's online. Then when you run it, it splits all those apart and uses a repeat action. So it adds each one of those items as a new separate task in my shopping list project. Bag checklist is a shortcut I use for packing for trips. Uh, this asks how many days you're going to be traveling. So that way it could do the math for the amount of clothes you need to pack. Now this uses a dictionary action for different categories. Uh, I did this because I don't always pack all of these items for every trip. For example, when I went to Disneyland last year, I didn't bring my camera gear. So I wouldn't want all of my camera gear stuff to be put on my packing list. So this lets me go through, select what I need, and then we'll add this to a new note in drafts. So that way I can kind of just go through and check them off. And it uses markdown formatting, so it's just easy in drafts to just mark things as checked off. Convert to thumbnail is a shortcut I use a lot, and I figured this would be something that people would like because it just compresses an image, and you can choose to how you want to compress it however you want. Um, I do this for thumbnails for YouTube videos. YouTube is very particular about the resolution of photos. They need to be 16 by 9, and they have to be under 2 megabytes in size. So I just use this shortcut to quickly format an image to make it fit those parameters. What I like about this shortcut is it uses an if action to determine determine if you're running this on Mac OS or anything else. If you're running this on any other platform, iPhone, iPad, whatever, it'll take the photo via the share sheet and then it will compress it and then save it out to files. But on Mac OS, this allows you to use the quick actions feature and the stop and output. So what this does is you can right click on a photo in Mac OS, go to quick actions and run this shortcut. It will then compress the image and then output it right over to where you ran this shortcut originally. So if it was on your desktop, it'll output it there. If it was in your documents folder, it'll output it there. And the last actual shortcut I want to mention, I got some automations I'm going to talk about here in just a second, but the last actual shortcut that you'll be able to download uh, is Shortcuts Versioning. So Shortcuts Versioning is a shortcut I worked on with my friend Matthew Casanelli. And I was really just kind of annoyed one day that there wasn't any sort of backup or versioning system in shortcuts because I deleted something I shouldn't have deleted. And it was like a really big shortcut and it was just going to be a pain to rebuild. 
So what this does is it'll takes all of your shortcuts, export them as a dot shortcuts file into the files app or finder or whatever. Uh, this saves it right into the shortcuts folder in a folder called backup and then puts them in a zip folder. Uh, so that way I can go back and reference them anytime I need them. But I don't manually run this shortcut because that would not be very efficient. I actually tie this to shortcuts automations. So in shortcuts, you'll see an automation tab. And this is a place that you can get shortcuts to run automatically, whether it's time-based, location-based, uh, based on focus modes, all sorts of different triggers in here. So I have the shortcut run at 12.10 a.m. every single day. And what I did is I set up an automation and I just used one action, run shortcut. So this action will actually allow you to pick a shortcut from your gallery and then it will run it. So shortcuts versioning is a whole separate shortcut. I run it manually. Uh, a quick side note, if you do download this one, I recommend running it manually one time for the first time and then setting up this automation. I don't know why, there's just some bug in shortcuts that if you do this, sometimes it just doesn't like running it automatically from the get-go, you just need to run it manually one time. But I use this run shortcut action, select shortcut versioning, and then at 12.10 a.m. every morning on my iPad, this shortcut runs. It gets all of my shortcuts that are in my gallery at that time, compresses them in a zip file, and then saves them into files. And this has saved my bacon so many times. Another automation I have, and this one runs on my iPhone, is a wake up automation. So this one is tied to my alarm. So whenever my alarm goes off, it automatically turns on my bedroom lights to about 10%, and it also turns on all the lights in the front of my house. And then it waits about 60 seconds, and then it turns my bedroom lights on to 100%. Because I am somebody that will just lay in bed if I don't have something kind of prodding me to get out. And turning all my bedroom lights on to 100% will definitely wake me up. Another automation I have, and this is actually a couple different ones, is changing my watch face. So uh, for example, at 6 a.m. it changes it to my activity face. At uh, 7 p.m., I believe, it changes it to my California face. And whenever I start a workout, it changes it to my fitness face. Uh, so you can really automate you know, your Apple Watch and changing your watch faces around. It's really nice. Lastly, I wanna give off some other shortcut resources. Uh, I do a lot of shortcut stuff here on the channel, but there are a lot of other people that cover shortcut stuff. Uh, I mentioned one already, my friend Matthew Casanelli. He has a website and a newsletter that you can go and download shortcuts. He talks about shortcuts. He actually worked on the workflow team that was, uh, that was the shortcuts app before it was bought by Apple. Uh, he knows his stuff. He does a lot of really good stuff. Uh, and then my pals over at Mac Stories, they cover shortcuts a lot as well. Uh, they have a shortcuts archive. They have a newsletter and a membership thing where they do a lot of stuff with shortcuts. And even just in their regular blog posts, uh, they talk about shortcuts a lot as well. And then lastly, I want to mention the Automators podcast. Uh, this is one I've been on a couple of times. I can link my episodes that I've been on in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, but they talk a lot about just automation in general, but they do cover shortcuts quite a bit. So uh, those are some more resources for you if you're looking for even more shortcut stuff. Like I mentioned, I will put links to all the shortcuts and apps that I mentioned in the description below along with uh, those other resources as well. Uh, my thanks to Exter for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.